Hello my lovelies and welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. Today we are making nothing elaborate. No, I'm not in the mood to spend hours in the kitchen. I have to run and jump into doing something. But I'm going to show you how I make a quick lunch sandwich. And I make it very often, even though I'm not a big fan of bread. I will get started and show you the ingredients that I'm using are easily available in all supermarkets. And um, if you've, you know, had uh, sandwiches that they sell at places like Charlie's or, you know, in the mall, you have all these sub shops. I'll be using the technique that they use there so that you can actually replicate this at home without having to go to the mall, without having to do anything. And you'll have all the ingredients right here in your kitchen to do what you need to do. All right, so I started out with two slices of bread and uh, this is a pan that is hot. I basically start out by getting the bread to be a little bit crisp. That's a good starting point. We are only going to use vegetables and some cheese. So the veggies that I'm using in this recipe are green peppers, one mushroom, and a little of these orange peppers, okay? Um, we are also going to use a little bit of oil. You can use any oil or cooking spray of your choice. And I will use this store-bought cheese from Aldi's. You can use sliced cheese, you can use grated cheese, any cheese of your choice. And if you like any other vegetables over this one, absolutely feel free to go ahead and use those. As far as seasonings are concerned, I'm again using a supermarket favorite. This is called Savory Herb and Garlic, and I use it pretty much on every dang thing that I have in my life which has to go on the grill. So the, the bread is toasting up really nicely. My heat is set to medium. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the heat of this pan to do the vegetables and to do the bread at the same time. Okay, so these are not seasoned. These are just chopped up. And I've tried to cut the peppers in two different sizes so that we can get different tastes and caramelizations from the same item in different colors. So you always want to eat nice colorful food, right? Now there is nothing Indian about this recipe except for the fact that I'm going to be adding chaat masala as one of the toppings. But this is very easily replicated at home. Now I will also be teaching you how to take regular mayo that you get in a jar and turn it into something that's a little more flavorful and a little more exotic. So stick around, huh? While the sandwich is actually coming together, we will use that time to make that mayo. Now make sure when you're trying to grill your vegetables that your heat is a little bit between medium and high. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add our savory herb and garlic. If you don't have this, you can definitely add Italian herbs. You can add garlic powder and just add it directly on to your veggies. You don't want a super salty sandwich because the cheese has all the salt. So it's a really great combination. The crunch is going to come from the vegetables. The smokiness is going to come from the grilling. The creaminess comes from the cheese. And of course, the toast is really nice and crisp. So that's a good thing. If you love tomatoes, you can also use tomatoes. It's a good addition. Just put a little bit of oil just to get the process going. I'm going to grab my spatula. Just to give it a little nudge. And keep an eye on the bread because you definitely don't want it to be toasted beyond recognition. A.K.A. burnt. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to, you know. So if you've seen in the mall how they have it, they have like this big grill and all the vegetables are happening on one side. All the meats are happening. So if you're vegetarian or vegan, then the thought of somebody slapping on some vegetables where some meat and the blood was sitting there is kind of really creepy. So you know what, do it at home. It's a really quick sandwich. And if you don't like crisp sandwiches, you can totally do it on just soft bread. You don't even have to do it on toast. I like it on toast because I only toast one side and then what happens is that one side is crisp and one side is soft. Today I'm gonna crisp up both sides. Now I really wanna come in here, I really want you to come in here very close. And just take, oh my God, it smells so good. You have no idea. Okay. Come in really close and see, don't those mushrooms look really nice? You see that? Yeah, this is right indoors in a New York apartment. It's not happening on the grill. It's not happening on a 50-acre mansion backyard where I have a butler who is whipping up grilled specialties for me. Mm -mm, I'm not there yet in my life. 
right here in a New York apartment. And if you have a ton of vegetables that you don't know what to do with, maybe you grew some vegetables in your garden and you have like a bumper harvest, but you don't know what to do with it, just grill them and keep it in your fridge. You can use it in your wraps, you can use it to make grain bowls, you can use it for sandwiches. See how nicely caramelized these peppers are? Now I'm going to quickly flip these over. Yay, see it has a great color on to them. Listen, I don't know where you're tuning in from, but if you could be in my kitchen right now, I would totally feed you the sandwich. It's just so delicious. And I've done the sandwich for lots of parties. I've done them for potlucks and people just absolutely love it. So you could literally have like a DIY sandwich bar where people are making their own sandwiches. You can uh, prepare them beforehand or you can do wraps. There's just so many possibilities now. Just be careful. We are not trying to wilt any of these vegetables. It's just to give it a little bit of color trying to keep the crunch intact and I'm gonna go and hit I turn the heat down again I will put some savory herb and garlic powder again right about now yeah okay so this already has salt it has Italian seasonings in it it has garlic powder but it's really a good starting point now comes the fun part. Let me see who all are tuning in. Let me say a big hello to Krishna Patel. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Wahid Ahmed, Aslam Lekum. Thank you for tuning in. Richie Goyal is here. Hi from India. And we have Leon Poppleton. We have Amy. Hi, Amy. How are you? So many of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for spending some time. Tim, of course, uh, my all time favorite. <laughs> I, have, I don't have favorites. I love everybody. <laughs> And then I have, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pronounce this name correctly, Ulriki, Ulrik, I don't know, I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but Ulriki Massey is watching us, so you know, thank you for joining me on my lunch soiree this afternoon. Jumping right back into how the sandwich is doing, I just love a good sandwich, quick easy sandwich that doesn't complicate your life. Alright, now the next trick that I'm going to do is... Since I have two of these, I'm going to make open sandwiches, right? But if you were doing a sandwich that's slapped on to each other, then you could just take this one as a whole. But because I'm going to make two open sandwiches, what I'll do is I will divide the veggies in half. One for each, one section for each bread. Okay, so this is my stash for this one, and this is my stash for this one. Maybe this one pepper could go here, because this is a smaller piece of bread. And you can see the bread is really well toasted. So I'm really going for a nice crisp sandwich. If you're trying to do like a lunchbox version of it, pack everything separately and it should be good to go. Okay, so once you make two little mounds for your vegetables, take the cheese and if you're vegan, you can do this with vegan cheese that melts nicely. And just plop the mound of cheese right on top of your vegetables. Not on the griddle, but on top of the vegetables, right? Just make sure you cover everything with the with the cheese. And you can make it as heavy handed or light handed as you like. There are no rules for this. Now one magic ingredient that I'm going to put on here is this thing called chaat masala. And this is a combination of dry mango powder, uh, black salt, dry ginger powder and some roasted cumin. So it's easily available in all Indian grocery stores. If you can't find it, you can text me or PM me. I'll be happy to send you a sample. It's called Chaat Masala, C-H-A-A-T. Okay, just sprinkle that. And this has a combination of a little bit of a tang from the dry mango powder and that umami, okay? Now, as you can see, this cheese is kind of sort of beginning to melt. You see that? So we're just going to wait till it completely melts. Ideally, if you have a cover that you can put on it, you should do that because it really helps to melt it fast. Okay, so just make sure that the heat is high and it can come through so that your cheese can melt. I'm going to turn off this exhaust fan because it's rather annoying. Okay, now I'm going to take these toasts off of this grill and I'll show you a quick technique to use regular mayo and kind of make it your own, right? So let me just refocus this camera so I can actually get it on my workspace, which is here. So you need a bowl. You are going to need just regular mayo. If, you, if you're vegan, then you can use vegan mayo, whatever kind you have. 
low fat vegan whatever you have this is a new one I don't really eat mayo that much okay so what we are now gonna make is called an aioli and a lot of uh, hi-fi chefs it's, a, it's just a hi-fi name for flavored mayonnaise and basically little things that you add to give it a unique twist that's all there is it's really not as fancy as it sounds and you can do this with any kind of flavor enhancing thing you can do it with any herbs of your choice which could be fresh herbs dry herbs you could do it with um, any vegetables you can but usually it has to do with some aromatics that you introduce into mayonnaise which is already in a jar or a can and then you give it a special flavor right so if you're trying to make garlic aioli you'll just put some grated garlic things like that okay so what i'm gonna do is i am gonna take some garlic this is grated garlic i just want you to come in here and look at the cheese look at that mm -mm. i'm gonna turn off the stove because i don't want this to burn and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use some freshly grated garlic that goes in here now mayonnaise is your friend because it's already seasoned, it's already balanced in terms of whatever else is going on in there. And to give it a little spicy kick, I'm going to use chili garlic sauce. This is sambal olek, uh, sriracha, whatever you have. And I don't like too much heat in my food, so just maybe a couple of drops. And mayo already has sugar, so there is already a sweet comp component in mayo. But if you like it super spicy, hey, go for it. If you feel like this heat needs to be balanced off, you can add a little maple syrup, you can add a little honey, whatever makes you happy, go ahead and do it. And then I'm going to use this thing called chili lime dressing. This is from our good friend Trader Joe's. So I'm really trying to stay within the supermarket aisle so nothing seems to exotic. Oh, you know, you can do this because you're Indian and we're not Indian, so we don't have access to stuff. Honey, we have access to everything. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this aioli, I'm gonna spread it really generously. So my favorite aioli I think would have to be a garlic and dill one. And I do that a lot in the fall with dill. I just love the flavor of fresh dill. Um, I don't even use some cilantro in my aioli as much as I use dill. And I really absolutely, shamelessly love dill in my mayonnaise and my spreads and my dips. Okay, so if this neighborhood of Rigo Park has taught me anything, it has taught me how to learn love dill. <laughs> yes, it has. Okay. So these are both my toasts, well coated. So imagine this like as a party appetizer. If you can do this on a cracker, it totally works. It's just a concept and I do this very frequently in the fall when I'm not feeling like eating a salad, but I just want something that's warm and comforting. And I'm not a fan of bread either, but they're just those days you know when you want to bite into that crunchy toast oh my god tell me if you don't want to come to this party and eat this toast with me right now right i mean yeah i like a nice avocado toast here and there but this is everybody's butt okay so i don't know if the camera angle has too much glare or whatever but here we go this is what this toast looks like if you could be in my kitchen right now and smell this honey, I'm telling you, we could be having a really good open sandwich party and you would be loving this thing, right? So um, tell me if you want to see a taste test. I'll be happy to do that as well. Now, as a finishing touch, you can either add a touch of cilantro or any kind of fresh herb. So if you have parsley, if you have crushed red pepper, um, you know, anything just to kind of bring that oomph along. And if you want to just go back and repeat the flavor of the garlic powder, you can actually go back and sprinkle this seasoning right on like so. Oh my god, are we in heaven or what? I don't even think I need chai with this. Okay, so now the moment of truth is coming. There is such a glare. <laughs> thank you Amy I appreciate it it actually tastes really good too and it's very simple to put together now I was busy chit chatting with you guys and I needed those extra minutes to explain what's going on but honestly speaking if um, I didn't have to do that this barely takes less than seven minutes to put together so it's 
you could be brewing your afternoon cup of tea and making this at the same time or if you have a bunch of vegetables that you've uh, grilled before you can use this inside a wrap you can use this inside a grain bowl this is a great way to use like you know that stray piece of bell pepper that's sitting in your fridge that those two mushrooms that you didn't use in your soup that kind of thing so it's really a great opportunity to use that if you have an avocado then you can totally ditch the mayo and just make a creamy spread with avocado and garlic and put some lemon juice on there tastes really good so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste test so forgive me if I'm tempting you because that is not <laughs> that is not the purpose of my life I'm just trying to share with you what we created and I'm gonna go bite right into it and I will give you an exact assessment of what is going on mm. sloppy super crunchy you heard the crunch when I bit into it right I'm telling you with the creaminess of the aioli that we made with the mayo it's just a store-bought mayo with store-bought garlic sauce no rocket science I could even imagine myself doing this without the cheese and I wouldn't miss the cheese because it's got such a creamy texture and it plays beautifully against the crispness of the toast. You can do this as a soft sandwich as well. You know, let's say you're making it for a senior person or a, or a child who has doesn't have teeth, you know, that can chew into crunchy things or crisp things. Make it like this. There's hardly any oil in this. And you could use fat-free mayo, do the same thing. You can ditch the cheese and bring out, bring down the calories even more. If you're vegan, you can do this with vegan cheese and vegan mayo. Always works. And it's a real nice quick pick-me-up. This can also be a good, um, I don't know, like a weeknight dinner with a cup of tomato soup or something. So, you know, warmer days are, um, cooler days are coming and we want to do heartier foods, but we don't want to necessarily um, overlook the goodness of all the vegetables that we have access to. So let's make the most of what we have. Oh, by the way, if you have eggplant, oh my God, eggplant actually when grilled like that and put on a toast really, really tastes amazing and i also know that in the neighborhood that i live we do get a lot of eggplants in cans which are already roasted so that might be something that you want to consider right so definitely you know keep this party going try to add flavors from things that you have already in your pantry i never recommend that you should go out there and buy a truckload of things just because you're trying to eat flavorful food um if you want to take any class with me you can find all the information on queenscurrykitchen.com which is my website you can find out about the book the vegan indian home and of course i'm working on two new books so if you want to get up onto that uh, pre-sale sheet and want to be notified of when those books are coming out feel free to go to the website and sign up for a free chana masala recipe download which will also entitle you to get notifications of the pre-sales of the books that are coming up and one of the things that are making in this book is an indianized open sandwich so yes this and a lot of other international recipes that i have tweaked to indianize will be featured in that book so don't miss out i um look forward to seeing you there on uh, my subscriber list and we do have a youtube channel as well so if you missed it here catch it on the youtube catch it on the replay share it with your friends if you think that you know this little sandwich recipe our little rendezvous brought some smiles into your life and of course don't forget to wash your hands before you eat anything it's still very real so please don't overlook that I'm in a neighborhood that is rapidly closing down because we are probably in the orange area. So please be careful out there and do not step out if you don't have to. Be blissful, be flavorful, try to find happiness in whatever we have by counting your blessings. I will see you real soon in the next one. I would like to quickly say thank you to all the people that I have not acknowledged before and I believe Carla is one of them and uh, Kashi Kumar Chauhan is one of them. Amy, of course, I acknowledged you, so yes. Uh, Nandini Dutt is watching. So Nandini, we are just signing off. We finished making the sandwich. I'm going to finish it because it's calling my name. Oh, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should do a show where I pick a recipe from an Indian movie. No, not a recipe. A location from an Indian movie. I will sing you an Indian song and I will make a recipe from that region. How about that? Think about it. If you like the idea, definitely drop it in the comments below. I would love to see what you have to say about it. And if there's any specific recipe that you want to learn, let me know. I'm happy to bring it to you. Let me say a big hello to Priscilla, but I'm still going to say goodbye because we are ending today's live. This is what we made, Priscilla. This is a toast. I hope you will catch this on the replay. I hope you will try to make it for you and your family. 
and I hope that you will take good care of yourselves and be safe out there. Thank you so much. All right, so Tim has given the vote of confidence. Tim says, yes, I should do it. So you know what? I'm going to do it. I will tell you what the song means because it's probably going to be in Hindi, which is uh, which may not be your native language. So I will tell you what it means. I'll give you a little background info and I will make a recipe from that region. All right, so let me get my, uh, you know, gray cells cracking a little bit because I know I have to bring you something that's exciting, right? So I will be on that mission. I hope you will take good care of yourselves and I will see you soon, very soon, in the next one. Take good care. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to check out queenscurrykitchen.com. Goodbye and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Cheers.